We are in one of our demo accounts. We are in D Demo's account. She's our ninth grade demo student. And we're going to go over really quick what your uh, school day is generally going to look like. This is um, how a typical school day at uh, Nevada Connections Academy looks. So when you, after you've had your breakfast and you sit down and you're, you got your pencils and your papers and you're ready to go and you log into Connexus, this is going to be kind of what your home page looks like. This is a demo home page, so it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. You'll notice there's a few things on your home screen that are important. Right here we have your to-do list that shows your lessons. And Dee still has several lessons she needs to complete for the day. It looks like she needs to do organic compounds, buy conditionals and definitions, uh, websites for her web design course, and she's already completed a couple for the day. Um, she's completed her U.S. history and her English lessons, but she still needs to complete a few more lessons for the day. Um, your lesson to-do list is the most critical part of your school day. This is going to show you what you need to do for the day, what your assignments are. And it's very important that you do what you're assigned every day, because if you don't do them one day, they are going to roll into the next day which means you have more stuff to do on the next day and they can back up on you pretty fast. So you want to get through all of these lessons for the day. Every lesson should be taking you about 45 minutes. Some might take a little less, some might take a little longer, but about 45 minutes is the average to completely get through a lesson. A couple other things you're going to see on here is uh, webmail. And you notice she's got 17 unread messages. Dee's not doing so good at checking her webmail. You want to make sure you check that every morning just to make sure uh, teachers, uh, the teachers might be trying to get a hold of you with important information. Um, a lot of times teachers will make changes to assignments to make them a little easier, make them a little more straightforward. They might send out special instructions. So you really want to be checking that and actually reading it. Just in case that information's coming through, you don't want to miss that. You could be doing extra work you don't have to do. And the other thing right here is your grade book. You have, you know, 24-7 access to your grades all the time. So, you know, definitely want to check in on that from time to time. And right here you have the message boards. Now, this year we're switching over to teacher websites. Some teachers are still going to be using the message boards, and they will maybe link to the, their website. But, you know, some teachers are going straight to the website. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting all my stuff straight onto the website um, just because I have a little bit more control and you, there's some more graphical stuff you can put on there. But, you know, you still want to check the message boards um, if you are aware that your teacher might not be putting everything on the website. And it's going to change from teacher to teacher, so make sure that you uh, know what's going on. Um, over here, you can see that uh, Jen has, I'm sorry, not Jen, D. Uh, there's D only has one teacher, Gen teacher, because it's a demo account, but usually you're going to have more um, if you're in high school. If you're in elementary school, you probably only have one, maybe two for some other kind of course, but um, middle school and high school, you're going to have more than one. Um, and you can see here is Gen teacher's contact information. There's a phone number right here. This little orange thing with the LL, that's a link to the live lesson room. We'll talk about live lessons um, in a minute. But these links and this information is important. If you have a question, please call your teacher. That's what we're here for. We can be reached uh, through a phone call. You can text the numbers. You can text to the numbers and we can text back. Uh, you can send a webmail, whatever. There's all kinds of ways to get in touch with your teachers. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. Um, up here, there's some other stuff that's a little bit more advanced, so you know we won't necessarily need to get into that right now, but we will touch on that later. I just kind of want to give you a quick overview of what your homepage is and what the important stuff is. Um, so remember, if you have any questions, technical problems, the clicks don't work, you don't know what to click, don't wait, don't let it back up. Like I said, those lessons will back up on you. So please, if you have any kinds of problems, make sure you get in touch with any teacher um, as soon as possible.
All right, lessons. This is going to be the bulk of your school day. So we're going to kind of go through a lesson and how it works. We're going to use a biology lesson as an example, but there are different things in different lessons, but they all follow the same basic format. So once again, we are on D Demo's homepage, and you can see she has a few lessons here she needs to complete. So we are going to look at organic compounds and click on it. So here's our lesson tab. This basically it takes you through a lesson on a you know a single piece of content that's in the textbook that you would do in a standard you know one of your biology period in a brick and mortar high school where the teacher would go through stuff and put up slides on the on the front screen, write stuff on the whiteboard, pass out worksheets. You know it's all that same kind of stuff that you get in a brick and mortar classroom. It's just all in one place for you online and you go through it yourself. But it follows the same basic format as a class in a brick and mortar school. So let's point out a couple things on this screen. So this is your lesson screen. Now, if you go over here to the left and click on this little purple arrow right here, that will open up your lesson tree, okay? And it shows you all of the lessons for this class in this unit. So this is biology one, the nature of life, and we're on lesson six, organic compounds. And you can see all the other stuff here too. So we're gonna close this out, click it again. Okay, now you're gonna see the first tab just kind of tells you what the lesson's gonna be about. The learning objectives of the lesson. What are we going to talk about in this lesson? And this tells you that on for this lesson, we're going to look at um, all of the chemistry that makes up life. Um, now it's gonna be different for every lesson. Every, t every class, you know, English is gonna be different. Math is gonna go over a certain math function things like that, but it's going to tell you what is in this lesson. And here are your learning objectives for this lesson. This is what you should know by the end of this lesson, these two things. And here's vocab words. Just kind of lays it all out for you so you kind of know what to expect. Okay, now once you've read that and you, you know you want to make some notes, you know, here's what I'm supposed to know at the end, here are the words that are going to pop up or the key terms. You go down here to the right to this little blue arrow and you go on to the next tab. This is the second tab of the lesson. And it goes into a little bit more. It gives you a reading assignment. It says read page 45 in biology. So you want to grab your textbook and open it up to page 45. Read it. Take some notes. If you don't have a textbook, uh, for whatever reason, maybe it hasn't arrived yet or you lost it or it's just not handy, um, the online textbook is right here. You can click on that and it'll actually take you to an online version of the textbook and you can just go to page 45. Go. See? Boom, there it is. Okay? It's the same textbook, it's just online. Okay, so we're going to go back to the lesson here. So it takes you through some more stuff. Um, right here, these links, all these blue links lead to stuff. Stuff that's important. Stuff that helps you to learn the material. So you, want, you don't want to ignore them. You want to click on them. So right here, Making models of macromolecules. Okay, that's going to take you to a worksheet. So you can print it out. I would recommend printing it out and complete the worksheet. And then you're going to stick it in your binder. Most of these worksheets that are inside the lesson don't have to be turned in. There are exceptions. Um, but these are just study aids for you to learn the material. Sometimes your teacher might ask you to turn it in for a grade. Not usually, but sometimes. But we'll make, we'll make you aware of that if it's the case. Um, here's another link to help you practice some concepts. We have lots of little fun gizmos and stuff that um, are kind of interactive and let you play with um, virtual tools to kind of break it up, you know, worksheets and reading is all fine and good, but sometimes you like to get some hands-on stuff. So with this little widget right here, um, you know, you can mix stuff together. Okay, you can test it. There's different types of tests you, that you're going to do on different chemicals. Let you know what happens. We can do the Benedict test for a carbohydrate, the Lugol test, and you, when you go through the lesson, you read, you learn about those things. So you have to read the material in order to know what to do with the widget. 
we call them widgets or gizmos. Okay, so be aware of those two. Um, and here's another worksheet. A lot of sometimes they're just articles. Okay, um, the third slide usually takes you into a little bit more detail. Read pages 45 through 49. Fill in definitions. Make sure you know what all these words mean. Um, more worksheets right here. You know the worksheets usually aren't too long. You know this one's only looks like it's a page of reading and then uh, a few questions. Then the next tab. Okay, and this is a practice kind of a review type um, activity. So when you get to here, you want to an you want to see if you know the answers to these questions, and don't just click show answer because this is kind of like a self test. There's no point in just showing the answer. This is to see if you know what you're supposed to know. If you don't know it, you might want to go back and review, which you can do. But you know you can check yourself, ask yourself the questions. See if you know the answer, maybe write it down, and then check to see if you're right. Okay, and then these are the answers to the worksheets that you did a couple of slides ago. You know, they give you the answer so you can check your own work. The point is to see if you know the material that's in the lesson and if you get it right. Because like I said, a lot of times they don't need to be turned in, so we go ahead and give you the answers so you can check yourself to see if you understand the material. If you don't, if you don't get them right, might want to go back and review. Now on the last tab, we're going to go to tab six here, there is an assessment. This looks like a little, it's a little quick check. Five questions. It just goes over the material in the lesson to check if you know. Now quick checks do count for your grade, but not a whole lot. They're not very heavily weighted. We really want you these to be just kind of a review to make sure you understand the lesson before you move forward. Okay, so you want to, you know, don't don't Google it. I mean, that doesn't help anybody. If you just Google it, you're not learning it. You want to try and answer it yourself. Now, if you don't do so hot on it, nine times out of ten, the teacher can reset it for you, and you can try it again. This is not like a, a gotcha type thing where if you don't know it right now, you, you're just doomed forever. No, that's, that's not how it works here. We want you to get it right. So you go through it, give it a go. If you do great, awesome, move on to the next one. If you don't do so hot, just let your teacher know, hey, I really wanna try this quick check again, or I wanna try this quiz again. Can you reset it? Usually, yeah, no problem. Because we want you to do what's called master the material. Mastering the material means you know it, you can show that you know it, and you move on. You know, you can do it as many times as you like. Okay, so that is how a lesson works. Now, like I said, it's gonna you're gonna have different stuff for different subjects. English will probably maybe have an essay assignment, um, maybe ask you to dissect a, a narrative or a story. Math is going to have practice problems, um, practice work, things like that. Every class kind of has something a little bit different, but they all kind of follow the same basic layout. So once again, if you have any questions about a certain part of a lesson, if something confuses you, please contact the teacher of that class, like right away, like right when you're stuck. Say, okay, I don't know what to do on this worksheet. I'm going to hop right over to my uh, homepage, click on the teacher's uh, contact info link, send a webmail or call. We're here during the day. Most teachers are here between 7.30 and 3.30. If you got a call after hours, um, you can do that too. We may not answer, but leave a voicemail and we'll contact you the next day or send a webmail. We'll contact you the next day. You know, we, we want to hear from you. We want to make sure you're staying on track and moving forward. So again, please feel free to contact us if you are stuck. So that's lessons. All right. So let's talk about how tests work here at Nevada Connections Academy. It's different than in a brick and mortar classroom, just like a lot of things here. Tests are not designed to be a gotcha event where, you know, you have to know it on test day or too bad, moving on. We don't work that way here. We want you to master the content. Even if that takes you two tries, even if it takes you three tries, even if we need to give you some different type of question so you can demonstrate that you know it. So you don't need to be nervous about tests. 
Now tests usually take about an hour to two hours depending on the subject. None of them take longer than two hours. Um, um, but you know sometimes they're timed depending on the subject. Sometimes they're not. But if they are timed and you don't finish, that's okay. The ones you didn't get to, a lot of times you can just send the answers in a webmail to the teacher. You have to check with each individual teacher on, on exactly what their policy is on that. But usually, you know, we will work with you. We will get you something, something else. So you can demonstrate that you know the material. That's, that's what our goal is. That's what we're all working together towards. So we're back on uh, D's homepage here, D demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a test. Now you can't do this on your uh, lesson tree, but this is a demo account, so we can do it here. We're going to skip ahead to the nature of life unit test, so you can take a look. So this test is timed, 55 minutes, 26 questions. It lets you know um, what the test, you know, how much time you have and how many questions you're on it. There's multiple choice and there's short answer. Um, so make sure that you got yourself some time. It's nice and quiet. Uh, you can concentrate, you've studied up, you're feeling good. Um, once again, you know, Googling answers does not help anyone. You want to make sure that you know this material and that you have learned it. Uh, do it all yourself. And then when you're ready, you just click Start Assessment. And there you can see the little timer up in the corner here. It's starting to tick down. And you just go through. And these are multiple choice questions right here. And you scroll down, and these are single answer, um, single answer questions. Make sure that you, um, if you spell it wrong, it will auto grade it as incorrect. And sometimes, like if you add an S or a period or something like that, it'll auto grade it wrong. But if you catch, you know, we're pretty good at catching that. But sometimes the teacher misses it. So if the teacher doesn't catch it, just drop a webmail. Say, hey, I, I put the plural form, and it marked me wrong, and we'll give you the point. Here's some short answer ones where you have to type in a response. And then when you're ready, you just click finish. And I didn't fill anything in, so it won't let me. But when you do that, it'll say, are you sure you want to submit this test? And, you know, you can double check. But when you're ready, you just hit yes, and it will submit the test. Uh, once again, if after the test is graded, the, the multiple choice stuff is auto graded. But the teacher has to... Uh, you know, manually grade the short answer stuff. So it usually takes a, you know, a few days to a week to get it back. Um, but once it is fully graded, if you want to take a look and go back and redo something, just drop a webmail um, and let the teacher know. We will work with you. We'll give you something. We'll give you some makeup work, extra credit. We'll let you redo it. You know, so please don't, don't be shy. You know, we're here to work with you. So just contact us. If you're not happy with anything, and we can we can work something out. Um, another note on tests: teachers have different um, like to do different things with the tests. Sometimes some teachers like to create their own custom tests and not even use the ones in Conexus. Um, we will be sending out information with that. I am playing with that idea to not even me personally. I am playing with the idea to not even use this test and create custom assessments of some kind that are a little shorter, not as stressful, not as timed, and just kind of, in my opinion, let you tell me what you what you learned, you know, and you know we we can take it from there. So the teachers might be playing with some different test options this year, and that's going to vary from teacher to teacher again. So just make sure that you are reading those welcome web mails uh, that your teachers send out because they have policy changes. They'll tell you stuff like that. It's important stuff. You know, as much as I enjoy typing, when I type out a letter to the students, it has important stuff in it. So just be aware of that. Don't freak out on tests. And like always, if you have any problems or questions, contact the teacher right away. So now we're going to talk about portfolios. What is a portfolio? Everyone knows and loves portfolios. So while the majority of the lessons and assessments and the stuff you have to turn in are uh, multiple choice quizzes, short answer stuff, things you just have to type in um, and submit answers, portfolios are projects. Uh, these are Things that you are going to have to write, create, draw, um, something that 
allows you to be creative and demonstrate to us that you can take the stuff that you've learned and put it into some kind of written or creative format. Um, and these differ wildly depending on the unit and the class. But again, like always, there are instructions. Um, so we're, we're going to take a look at the portfolio that D Demo is on. And it looks like she has to come. Um, she has completed her writing workshop family narrative for English class, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So we click on it. And again, the portfolio is going to be at the end of this lesson on the assessment. You only have, on average, one portfolio per unit. There are not that many of them. Uh, that's one, one per unit per class. So, you know, you're going to have you know, maybe one or two portfolios a week, usually a little, sometimes less than that, depending on what the time of the year it is. But there's not a whole lot of them, but they are the thing that are going, that's going to require you to, you know, create something. So this is the example of the English portfolio. This is the family narrative, and it's going to take you through the lesson, explain to you what a family narrative is. Um, in this example, a family narrative is a story that's important to your own family history. And it's going to tell you all the stuff that is in a family narrative. You know, a problem, a plot, characters. You know, it's a story. So it's walking you through what it's supposed to look like. Okay. And it's going to tell you all the things that you need to do to double check your work. Plan it, organize it, create a rough draft, brainstorm, all that fun stuff. And then you're going to go continue going through the lesson. It's going to give you a checklist, worksheets, avoid sentence errors, make sure it's grammatically correct, you know, run that spell check. Going to give you some vocab words. Okay, and when you get to the last slide, okay, it says here because she's already done it. But what, what this is going to look like, this is called the Dropbox. Okay, and you know, this is a demo account, so it doesn't show it exactly right. But right in this part, in this area right here, normally, is a place where you can upload a file. So in this example for the family narrative, you would write out your family narrative in Microsoft Word, um, edit it, check it, make sure it's good to go, and then you will upload the file to the Dropbox. And then, then you click Submit. And then boom, it's off to the teacher. Now, like I said, these will the, the structure of these will vary. Sometimes it's going to be a PowerPoint. Sometimes it might be a worksheet that you have to fill in. Sometimes it might be practice problems for math. It's go, they're going to change from time to time. Now, here's a great thing: if the portfolio that's written in Connexus, if, if you're unable to do that for whatever reason, meaning you don't have the materials, um, you know, maybe maybe you don't learn in the same way that the portfolio that's in Connexus is, is having you do it. The teachers have other options for the portfolios. You know, maybe you just, maybe um, the assignment is for a PowerPoint presentation and you just are not very good with PowerPoint and, you know, you really just don't have the time to mess with it and work with it. Maybe you could write up just a report, okay? Or maybe you could write up something by hand. You know, there are options, so you don't have to necessarily always do what the portfolio in Connexus says. And that's where the teacher's websites come into play. A lot of times they will put their alternate portfolio options on the website, and you can just check and see which one you want to do, and that's what you'll submit to the Dropbox. Okay, you just follow what's on the website, do it, and upload that to the Dropbox. So they're, we're all about options here. You know, if you for whatever reason... If you have problems, let us know. We will figure out something for you to do. Um, and double check that website first, because a lot of times the alternative assignments will be right on the website. So take a look. If you're still having problems, don't understand. You know, I sound like a broken record here, but contact the teacher. Phone, text, webmail. We're here. We're here to help. Don't hesitate. Now, as you may have guessed, 
Nevada Connections Academy being an online school, we don't have a lot of opportunities to get together as a group. We do have field trips all the time, tons of field trips, but you know, not everybody comes to those. You know, you might not be able to come at the same time as the people you know and so forth. We do have those uh, available all the time, but the only time we can regularly get together and everyone be there is in live lesson. You will have one hour of live lesson per subject every week and it's going to be on a different day. Um, for example, science is on Thursdays. So your science live lesson is going to be sometime on Thursday. My biology live lesson is Thursdays at one o'clock. So it's really important you come to live lesson. It's, it gives you know gives an opportunity for some back and forth, lets you ask questions, um, lets you interact with the other students. Um, a lot of times in a live lesson, the teachers kind of hit on the more uh, confusing aspects of the lessons, go over portfolios, you know, things that, that might give you a little bit of trouble if you just go for it on your own. So we have live lessons to kind of help with that. And you really, really want to try to make it live. Now, if you can't, if you absolutely can't make it live, you have an unav unavoidable conflict. We do record them and you can watch the recording later. But, you know, it's not the same. You know, we like to kind of have back and forth and get to know the students a little better. So I want to show you really quick what a live lesson looks like. So this is uh, D Demo's uh, homepage again. And here's her teacher, Jen Teacher. Now, if you're in middle school or high school, you're going to have like probably six teachers or more on this little note thing here. But everyone is going to have a little orange icon that says LL. That stands for live lesson. So what you're going to do is at the appropriate time, you know, maybe a few minutes early, you're going to go there and you're going to click on that icon and it's going to zap you right over to the teacher's live lesson room. So for my live lesson, you know, around 1255, you want to click on that and it'll zap you to the live lesson room and you can hang out and talk with students for a few minutes and then we'll get started on the lesson. But when you click that, I'm going to take you to my live lesson room. Here's what the live lesson room looks like. Um, the live lesson is going to take a variety of different formats depending on the teacher and what you're studying. Um, you get for, for math, for example, the teacher does demonstration problems to show you how to do uh, the math, how to work out the skills, how to work out the problems. And seeing that and being able to ask questions is critical. So, I mean, that's where you're going to learn your math. I mean, some, some folks you know might stare at a math problem all day by themselves and and never understand it but you know five minutes in a live lesson with the teacher and snap you got it so go to live lessons like and they're going to take different formats for biology for science um there might be a brief uh, powerpoint going over a few things and then we might switch into a worksheet that we do together as a class um there's worksheets here maybe show some videos uh, maybe do like some quick kind of self-check quizzes with some poll pods. And you'll notice down here there is a chat pod. Now, you might think you need a headset and a webcam to attend live lesson. You do not. In fact, very rarely do we put students on the microphones or on the webcam. If you have them, great. If, you know, you have a question you, that's kind of complicated that you want to ask through the headset, with voice that's cool we can definitely allow you to do that but you don't have to have it a lot of times you're going to just com communicate with the chat pod down here and you know i'm the only one in here right now so it's kind of lonely um but you know you, it's just you know you don't have to be shy you don't even have to like comb your hair i don't comb mine uh, a lot of the time so um well i do when i put my webcam on so you don't have to worry about that um but yeah, you, you know, you don't have to have those things. You just have to show up and participate. Say hi in the chat pod, engage with the lesson, ask some questions. You can say, hey, can you slow down a sec? I'm, I'm writing some notes or whatever, you know. And it shows you here in the attendee pod which of your fellow students are in the live lesson. So you could kind of go down and say, hey, Jimmy or Sally, how you doing? How was the ball game? Yada, yada, yada. You know, so we give you a few minutes before the lesson starts to kind of chat and socialize a little bit. And that's cool. And maybe sometimes even a little bit over if we get involved in something. So, you know, it's kind of fun. And then just kind of sit back and listen and take notes and ask questions. 
So this is why it's important to go to live listen. You really want to try to make it live. Um, but like I said, they are recorded. Those links will be on the, the class message boards and on the teacher websites. Um, if you if you go to the teacher websites and you click on the live lesson link, you have to be logged into Connexus on another tab for the link to work, just to let you know. Um, so again, uh, we, we hope to see you all in live lesson. We love interacting with you. And just like everything else, if you got any questions, you just let us know. We have just gone through the bulk of what you need to know to be successful at Nevada Connections Academy. We've gone over the homepage, we've gone over lessons, tests, portfolios, live lessons. Those are the big things that you need to be comfortable with to succeed here. But there are always housekeeping activities that have to be tended to. Not too many, just a couple, but we're going to go over them now. So what you're looking at right now is a learning coach uh, web uh, homepage. Your learning coaches all have logins of their own where they can monitor you and see how you're doing and check up on you. But what you've got to do and what you need to kind of remind learning coaches to do in case they forget. I mean, most are really on top of it, but, you know, it's kind of easy to let it go. You have to remind them to take your attendance. See right here, there's a little link. It says record attendance. Your learning coach puts in the hours that you work. Um that you do schoolwork. And depending on your grade level, you have to put in a certain number of minimum hours per week. Okay, anywhere from 24 to 28 hours a week, depending on your grade level. Now, when you do those hours, it doesn't matter. You know, if your schedule demands that you do your lessons at two o'clock in the morning, um, you know, I guess as long as that's cool with your with your learning coaches, you know, go for it. You know, teachers aren't going to be available at that time, but you can, you know, leave web mails or messages or whatever. Um, but when you do it, is not you know it's not critical just the total number of hours per week adds up to the proper amount you know you the state requires you to put in a certain number of hours per week of schoolwork okay so that is where your learning coach comes in they have to record the attendance and right here in the attendance they just fill in these little boxes you know coach demo has a lot of kids you know one for every grade um but, you know, your your name, you know, maybe there's more than one student in your household, maybe not, whatever, but all of the students are here on the attendance screen, and they just got to, you know, fill in the boxes. You know, maybe maybe Jimmy did five hours on Saturday, uh, seven hours on Wednesday, you know, maybe just put in a couple hours, worked on a portfolio on Sunday, you know, whatever. Just as long as the total for a week adds up to the appropriate amount, you're good to go. Now, if the attendance lags, falls behind that required total, you're going to go into what's called escalation. And there will be a little yellow warning at first, and then there will be a red flag. And at that point, when you go into escala escalation, someone's going to call and say, hey, why are you in escalation? Why are you not putting in your attendance hours? Why are you not, you know, keeping up on your work? And, you know, we, we don't want that to happen. So make sure you're reminding your learning coach to put in the attendance hours. Another thing the learning coach has available is they have a pending lesson section. And it looks like my, my computer, there it is. Um, they have a pending lesson section. So when a student turns in lessons, it says pending approval. Now this doesn't mean that it doesn't go to the teacher. This is just kind of a way for the learning coach to know how many lessons you have submitted. This, you know, the, the learning coach doesn't have to approve the lesson for it to go to the teacher. It goes to the teacher right away. But this is just kind of a way for the learning coach to get a handle on how many lessons you're completing. Are you completing the appropriate number of lessons? Are you, are you behind? Such and such. And every, the learning coach has a little, a little section for every student in the household. And look right here. D's an alarm. See? On track, on track. D's an alarm. Gus is in alarm. Jackson is approaching alarm. So, you know, they get these notifications. Um, so, you know, they, they can see what you're up to. <laughs> but you just need to remind them to take your attendance. That's kind of the big thing. Um, 
that, that's if you're in high school. Now, if you're in elementary school, the learning coach is much more involved with your curriculum. Is going to be working with you a little more closely. But, you know, in middle school and high school, we kind of kind of like to let the students, um, you know, be independent and do their own stuff. And the learning coach is just kind of there to watch and make sure you're doing your, you're doing your thing. Um, for teacher contacts, now, as I said numerous times, you can contact us whenever you like, and we encourage it. But you are required to have a certain minimum amount of voice phone contacts with a teacher to not go into escalation. You want to stay out of escalation. That's that's the idea. So, I mean, usually it's like two per semester for high school. It's more uh, for middle school and elementary school, but for high school it's two per semester. You've got to talk to teacher two times to stay out of escalation. I'm hoping you're going to talk to teachers way more than that. But, you know, you can't just vanish. You can't just be this... You can't just be a digital ghost on our Connexus screens. We want to, to you know, get to know you and talk to you and see what you need help with, or, or, or just tell you you're doing a great job. You know, if if you're if you're rocking and rolling and you just don't need that much extra help, that's cool. You know, just call and say, hey, I just wanted to check in. I'm doing great, and we'll say, yeah, cool. Well, keep up the good work. You know, maybe we'll help you with some. If you, if you have questions about college or how credits work, or if you want to go a little bit more in depth into some material you find particularly interesting, we can do that. But you know, there is a minimum number of required contacts, so you want to make sure you're doing that. But like I said, we encourage you to call and webmail and text and all that stuff a lot. Um, the last thing I'm going to go back to D's. Uh, this is the student page again. Make sure that you are checking your gradebook regularly. I, I would check it every day because as, as assignments come in, you may see that your grade rose or dropped. And if it dropped, you might want to say, OK, what caused my gradebook to drop? And you can check. Um, I won't let me do it because I'm logged into the other account, uh, account too. But anyways, you want to check your gradebook and make sure that you're staying on top of your classes. You need, you know, you have 24/7 access to it. Use it. Um, there's a couple little tiny, more advanced things here and there, but you know, we can we'll, we'll go over that in a different uh, a different video. But for now, be doing your lessons, be going to live lesson, call the teachers when you have problems, and you're going to be golden. That's it. No fuss, no muss. And I wish all of you the best of luck in this school year.